Let's talk about the ship that never sailed. Okay, the story starts in Independence, Missouri with an old man named Harry Hoy. He started the projects that uh, one of them got completed, one of them didn't, one of them wasn't his. So we're gonna introduce you to that. There's a couple newspaper clippings here. 1986, I believe, was the first one that the examiner did. And then you'll see the other one was in the examiner, but I think it was like 1992. He started this big ship in Independence and then drug it about, what is it, 28 miles from Independence to Napoleon, Missouri, where he was planning on putting it in the river. We're going to take you on a tour of that boat. Okay, we'll start out on the top deck here. We've had to climb up an extension ladder, you can see there in the corner. Walking along it here, this boat is quite big. Um, there was actually two of these boats built. My understanding is the designer finished his boat, the guy that designed them, and Harry never finished his. But I believe Harry did the welding and the construction of both of them. I don't know. If you know more about it, put something in the comments. So there's this like little galley way that we go in here. We'll take another look at it here soon. And I don't know what this would be called. This is kind of your cockpit area, I bet. There's like a front room in here. You can see none of this has been touched for a long time. This boat has been kind of abandoned in the woods. And my brother actually got a hold of this property. He's wanted this property for a while. There's a set of spiral stairs here that leads down to like an under bunk. And it opens back up into some other rooms. You'll see. There's another room there. I don't know if that'd be like a bedroom or storage. Kind of strange. In this room, I don't know, it's kind of like a main room. I bet this is like the galley or something. Got a big fireplace in it. We were thinking that was a clock, but the more we look at it, there's no actual clock in that. It's a big area though. You could easily have like a little kitchen and stuff inside this. And this is the engine room. There's an old Cummins in there. It's a really old Cummins. Not a very big one either. I don't know what this would have been in, but it probably doesn't take much to move the boat because you're not going to want to go very fast. And there's an aft area back here. This is, could be a bedroom or storage or something. Probably pretty noisy that close to the motor though. That engine room itself is quite big. You could do a lot in there. That's the size of most people's typical bedrooms. So I'm sure you could do all kinds of other stuff in there. Hot water heaters and purifiers and inverters and whatnot. So we're back to this galleyway here. It's got benches on the side and the little trap doors going in. You can see these here. Parts of it work, parts of it don't. Looks like there's another something to go in there to close that off. This one closes down. You'll see here there's two little side doors that don't really operate anymore. They've rusted up. Yeah, that one moved a little. The boat's about 60 feet long. It's kind of hard to see that until you're really standing over it. I think it's supposed to be like a total of 90 once everything's attached to it. I don't know how we move this thing. He used like a dolly. I'll show you in the very end the dolly. It's got semi axles, like a semi trailer welded to the end of it. It's gigantic. He drug it down. So what's going to happen to the old boat? Well, we don't know. 
We don't know what to do with it. It's my brother's. Like I said, he bought the property. It's so big that it would take a lot of money to do something with and a tremendous amount of work. Um, it's only about 100 feet from the river. You could say, well, what if the river flooded? Well, it would have to come up quite a ways to get it to float. Um, it's not that far above the river, but the fact that it would probably take about 10 to 15 feet of water somewhere in that range to float it up off the ground it's at. And it has a hole in the bottom. In fact, I imagine where the prop is supposed to go through. They've never finished that part, probably to keep it drained out so it doesn't totally rust up. You could imagine how much water that would hold. Um, he's heard some people say, scrap it. Man, I would hate to see that. Hoy put a lot of work into that boat. That was his dream. He had two daughters that grew up watching that old man weld these boats up. And uh, he got emphysema and died. Obviously, a lot of, that happens to a lot of welders. So what do we do with it? Does somebody downstream from us buy it and build a house on it? Do we do something with it? I don't know. I simply don't think we have the time and the money. We probably don't even have the knowledge because it's supposed to be a sailboat. If you will look up the schooner Spirit of Independence, you'll see the other boat. It is currently, I think, in the Florida area. There's tons of videos on it. That boat was finished. Hoy's was not. So, and you can see little differences in them. But then again, once you study, you'll see a lot of similarities. The way the hull is designed, they're both steel boats. I had a friend that went on um, the Spirit of St. Louis, and he said it's gorgeous. They do dinner cruises and stuff, I guess. Sleeps like 14 people. This boat was going to be very similar. So now what do we do with the boat? Well, there are some ideas out. We'll see what we can figure out. And who knows? I think just moving it would be... Uh, a big task, much less rebuilding it into something that it hasn't ever been. So that's the ship that never sailed. Well, we'll catch you guys later.